I've got to admit, this is new territory for me. I've analysed three and a bit seasons of romance anime over the last few years, but this is somehow my very first dream sequence. Dreams can be both a blessing and a curse in storytelling. If used to make major plot developments in a way that has no impact on the overall plot, they can be anticlimactic in an annoying way. However, if used to explore the psyche of the characters having the dream, they can be far more insightful than a regular conscious story. Luckily, the dream sequence that takes place in episode 1, Grip Strength Thingy, falls into the latter category. Nothing groundbreaking happens before we realise it's a dream, and everything afterwards is surreal enough that we know not to expect any canon plot development. However, there is a lot to unpack about Nishkuta's current mindset around his relationship with Takagi, and the underlying guilt over what happened at the Summer Festival. The story begins as a fairly faithful adaptation of chapter 103, Grip Strength. It's a fairly general story by this point. Nishkata tries to look cool, Takagi calls him out, and ultimately gains the upper hand. From a meta standpoint, the generic nature of this story is probably being used to get us off guard, and lull us into a false sense of familiarity, before they pull the rug out from under us with their more surreal imagery. And it worked! If you recall my first impressions video, I mentioned being tricked by this story myself. Things start to become weird when Takagi holds out her hand for the grip strength thingy. Despite being populated just a few shots ago, the room is now completely empty, as Nishkata's subconscious breaks down the scene and becomes more fixated on Takagi. I can't help but think back to Day Duty all the way back in Season 1, Episode 1, when the pair were alone in the classroom and Takagi commented that it felt like they were the only two people in the world. I doubt that this was an intentional callback, but repeating imagery like this is always worth drawing attention to. This dream takes another step out of reality when Takagi grips Nishkata's hand tighter and is suddenly wearing her summer festival outfit. This is when it becomes crystal clear that we are dealing with a dream. Believe it or not, there is a manga chapter, specifically chapter 17, Dream, that contains a dream sequence like this. But this is the kind of dream sequence I talked about before. The kind that tricks you into thinking that plot development is happening before pulling the rug out. If they were going to adapt this chapter, I'm glad that they did what they do best, and took the story in another direction. Upon hearing the phrase, you haven't had enough of holding my hand, we are taken right back to the Summer Festival at the end of Season 2. From an in-universe perspective, it makes perfect sense that these events are at the forefront of Nishkata's mind, as timeline-wise, the Summer Festival only just happened the night before. But from a meta standpoint, this is a promise. A promise that the events of the Summer Festival do matter and will not be treated like something inconsequential. Unfortunately, this season does have some fairly big moments that get forgotten about in service of maintaining the status quo. Until it's time for character development, of course. But the Summer Festival is not one of those events. Nishkata loses Takagi, thus reliving one of the worst mistakes he's ever made in the show. This begins the primary conflict of the dream. He's once again lost Takagi, and wants to find her. The first segment of this dream sequence is definitely bizarre. Takagi is basically filled in for by Nishkata's male classmates. From a meta perspective, I thought this could be a way to introduce us to some side characters. I mean, we've got Kimura up top, Takio, Tanabe, Nakai, those two guys from Critical Hit, but this scene is unlikely to be a side character roundup as it only shows us the male classmates and Hamaguchi, one of the main side characters, doesn't make an appearance here. Instead, this scene could potentially be an allusion to Nishkata's anxiety around being seen with Takagi, and having his intentions misunderstood. The very same anxiety, mind you, that created the situation at the Summer Festival. Notice how Kimura is the head of this scene, the one person who knows for sure how Nishkata feels about Takagi, and who Nishkata is unable to plead ignorance towards. The next two are Takio and Tanabe. One, Nishkata's friend who has asked about him and Takagi on multiple occasions, and caught them on a date together. And the other is a teacher who, let's be honest, is probably pulling some strings behind the scenes to keep these two sitting next to each other. We know from later this season that Tanabe is a big old sap for a good love story, so not only is he probably onto these two already, he's likely helping out in the ways he can. 
Everyone else in this shot likely at least has their suspicions, and Nishkata is likely all too aware of this. He knows how people perceive him, that's why he hid himself at the summer festival with the robot zombie mask that later obscures the entire screen. The following sequence deals with another anxiety of Nishkata's, albeit one that hasn't been explored as thoroughly. But before that, a rather subtle hint regarding Nishkata's physical attraction to Takagi. Now, you know me, I haven't done the whole waifu thing since the incident, but I do know that part of anime culture, especially for younger people, is developing a crush on certain fictional characters. It isn't entirely unreasonable that Nishikata has such a crush for Kiyunko from 100% Unrequited Love. Takagi even tries to take advantage of this implied crush while they're out on Christmas. Notice how Kiyunko is sitting in Takagi's seat and later turns into her. This could potentially be a clue that his fictional crush on Kiyunko is similar to how he feels about Takagi. When Aikyo enters the room as the new exchange student, Kiyunko becomes Takagi and swoons over him. Quick sidebar, if you're going to choose an image to represent what this show is about and what it's like, this is probably the worst one you can use, high dive. When Aikyo pulls Takagi closer to him and openly flirts, Nishikata is no longer in the room, but rather observing these events from a cinema. This is the anxiety I referred to earlier the fear that he may one day lose Takagi. We know from tandem riding that Nishikata is the jealous type, and we know from camping trip that Takagi is popular among the other guys in their grade. Nishikata has already lost Takagi literally, and it left enough of an impression on him that he relives this moment in his dreams. But there's a lingering fear that he may one day lose her in a more emotional sense, and that he will be powerless to stop it. The next part of the dream is probably the most difficult to decipher. Nishikata gets attacked by a cat, then Takagi is a cow and he's a sheep? What the hell is going on? I think the area they're in is supposed to be the spot they found in treasure hunting, and the spiked ball that lands on sheep Nishkata's head, Nishkata, if you will, is definitely a bit of foreshadowing for the culture festival. But other than that, I was completely stumped as to what this scene was trying to accomplish or say, but I think I might have figured it out. The cat is likely a way to get Nishkata's vision impaired that just so happens to loosely relate to something these two have in common. But beyond that, the most prominent line in this segment is, she's taking this teasing thing way too far. If the first surreal segment was about how nervous Nishkata is being watched by his classmates, and the second was about how he may lose Takagi if he does not act soon, this segment appears to partially explain why he hasn't made a move yet, represented in a moment where Nishkata attempts to make an intimate gesture, but winds up being tricked. The rivalry aspect of their friendship can make it hard for Nishkata to properly process his feelings. Anytime he has wondered whether he may have feelings for Takagi, he eventually interrupts himself, often with help from Takagi. So it makes sense that a scene that starts with him trying to hold her hand will turn into… well, this. We get to the final segment of the dream where Nishkata is faced with his cowboy idol Dandy. They begin to deliver their iconic line about taking advantage of your enemy's weakness, before turning into Takagi and finishing the line about it being strategy. If I was correct in saying that the previous scene was about how Takagi is always teasing Nishikata, then this scene is about how she is always winning and Nishikata is always on the back foot. But there is one minor detail that is worth taking into consideration. When Takagi shoots Nishikata, there's a splash of confetti. This is likely to confirm that he hasn't really just been shot, referencing the low stakes of their rivalry. However, this confetti sure does seem similar to the confetti that popped out of Nishikata's jack-in-the-box in Worries. What could that possibly mean? I'll get into this more when we analyse the lunch, but there's a fact about the dynamic between these two characters that rarely, if ever, gets explored. Nishkata may lament his constant defeats, and vow that one day he will turn this around. But above anything else, Nishkata enjoys this rivalry. It's fun and exciting, and even if he hasn't won, he understands that the both of them are better off with this dynamic than they would be without it. The best example in his mind being that a failed prank attempt cheered Takagi up on a bad day. This is when Nishikata wakes up, and there is one thing I want to point out about this scene in particular. 
Nishkata has a bit of brain lag upon waking up, not being entirely sure what's real and what's not. This is evidenced by the fact that he wakes up worrying that he is late for school, before questioning if the summer festival incident had even happened. Notice that when he asks this question, he is panicked, but once he sees the robot zombie mask confirming that the summer festival was not a dream, he looks genuinely relieved. When I say that grip strength thingy makes a promise that the events of Summer Festival mean something, this moment is why I make that claim. Nishkata from Season 1 would have every reason to hope the entire Summer Festival was just a dream. Not only did he lose Takagi, but he ended the night with a grand intimate gesture. But early Season 3 Nishkata is glad that it happened, and likely only regrets the part where he lost her hence reliving this moment in his dreams. Grip Strength Thingy gives us our starting point for Nishkata. He's still mired in the rivalry aspect of their dynamic, but he is aware that there is more to their relationship than that. There's a desire to be closer, but this desire is torn between his fears of what others will think, and his worries that Takagi may one day move on from him. We will see him process these feelings over the course of the show, and eventually come to understand them better. But first, we're going to have to look into where Takagi is starting this season from. I'd like to thank my patrons, Orion Tran, Lars Espen, Data52, Jaman5, Pixcalibur, Tyler Bennett, Tenka, Jeremy Pashik, Fireclaw, Chris, Luke Stewart, Ignatio, Swiss Cage, Gerald, and John. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.